Hello dear friends, you and Humphrey is here and speaking to you just a few minutes, about a 10 minute message on the fact that the Bible teaches here about a miracle at a marriage. A miracle at a marriage. And it's found in the, in the book of John in the New Testament, the second chapter, the first few verses, it says there was a, there was a, we a, a wedding in Cana of Galilee and Jesus and his disciples were asked to attend and Jesus attended the wedding with his disciples and the mother came to him and said that they have run out of wine and Jesus said to his disciples go to the six water pots and fill them up with water and each one of those water pots uh, contained about 30 gallons and he said fill them up with water and then pour out a glass of it and take it to the governor of the feast and he did that and when the governor tasted the wine I mean the, the what he thought he was, it was water but it had been turned to wine and he said this is the best wine I've ever drank and so the first miracle was turning water into wine and it was at the marriage of Cana of Galilee and so there is a word here on marriage. It's a good thing to invite Jesus Christ to your wedding. Any time that you have a wedding or your family or friends, it's good to invite Jesus to be present at that wedding. And if you invite him and believe in him, he'll be there. And he'll make the wedding and the marriage stronger. I married many, many people through the years. And I've always prayed at the beginning of my service and asked the Lord God to to be with us and that Jesus Christ would be there present at that marriage like he was at the marriage of Cana of Galilee. And many of my times now the marriages have gone out and they've been blessed and they bloomed and they just was uh, was good. Had their times of trouble but, but they, they were strong and they made it in a happy marriage. I've had a few of them that didn't work out and that was bad. But it happened that way. But in a way we see then that marriage is a good thing. God has said if a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. And it's a good thing for, I think, for people to get married that both of them are be Christians. I think it's a good thing for a man and his woman, and the woman both to be Christians, and to be married and to expect a, a happy, a healthful marriage. The Bible says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. And so it's not a good idea for a person that's a Christian to marry a person that's not a Christian. Because when that happens, you're asking for trouble that you don't really need. And so this is important. The Bible says also over in the book of, uh, of uh, uh, John, no, it's in the book of uh, of Ephesians in the fifth chapter we read these words concerning uh, marriage wives submit yourselves to your husbands even as Christ uh, was submitted to by the church even as the church submits to Christ and so as the church submits to Jesus Christ so must the wife submit to the husband in love and in the word of God and husbands love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And so husbands are to love their wives even as Christ loved the church and gave his life for that church. And so it is that a husband ought to be willing to give his life for his wife. And so it's important that, this, that the wife see that she reverence her husband and the husband see, see that he loves her even as he does himself. And so it's important to see marriage as being very important. And it's meaningful. And I thank God for it. And I pray God's Spirit to move upon you that are listening. And you need to find and a preacher. You need to find a church. You need to find someone that will be willing to marry when you really feel like that God has given you someone to spend the rest of your life with. And now we turn to the thought of wine. We find that wine was a social drink in those days, and many people drank it much like they do today, iced tea. However, I feel like that the wine was 
uh, was probably able to be become uh, uh, intoxicated if you drank enough of it. But it was not like the wine they're selling today, I don't think, that's got so much alcohol in it. Because even at the Lord's Supper, we call it the bread and the wine, but, he, but the Bible says he took the bread and broke it, and then he took the cup and the cup of the fruit of the vine, the fruit of the vine. And so it's called the fruit of the vine, which is grape juice. And so the wine in those days were a little different from what they are today. But here's a scripture that has helped me to become a teetotaler. I don't have, I don't drink any form of alcohol. The Bible says over in Romans in the, in the uh, 14th chapter and in verse 21, it says, uh, Let him that eat, not eat any flesh or drink any wine, if it offends your brother, or if it causes any Christian to stumble. And so, you have an influence, Christian. You have an influence over the lives of others. And there are many Christians who do not believe that it's good to drink any form of alcohol. And I'm one of them. And if I drink, and I'm caught drinking a glass of wine, it's going to hurt the faith and, and uh, cause some of the Christians to, to stumble. And so for that reason, your influence will count, and it's best just to leave it alone completely. I know that it, that it, it, uh, it, it says over in Timothy that... Uh, that uh, First Timothy, in, in, uh, in the fifth chapter, Paul said unto Timothy, uh, Drink a little wine for your stomach and for your often infirmities. And so there's a medicinal value in wine I, uh, for, for some purposes. But because of the situation and of the, of the awful, awful infliction of pain and heartache that's causing all over our country, I think that any form of beverage alcohol is not good. And so praise the Lord. Then we turn to the fact, though, that he turned the water into wine. And I'd like to say that there's a spiritual truth here, and that is that the Lord God can turn that which is heavy and heartache into power of blessing and joy and peace. He can turn the water into wine. It was true in my life. There was a day in my life when I was around 20 or 21 years of age and I was walking in darkness and I knew I had gotten away from the Lord and I cared not for him and I was walking in darkness and I just I just was sick half the time and there came a time one Sunday morning when I woke, woke up and I could hardly breathe and I fell off on my knees and I began to pray for, for the first time in several years and I prayed for God to forgive me and the Lord heard my prayer and the hand of God was upon me and I stood up and I began to feel better and I said praise the Lord and I've been serving the Lord ever since he turned the water into wine I may be talking to somebody right now there was a time in your life when you walked in darkness and you cared not for the things of God you were, you were sewed up with this whole world and you were looking always for something to make you feel better and have a good time and it was costing you your life and you, can, you have come to the place where you believe in Jesus. And you've given your heart to Him. And praise God, your life has changed. And you no longer look for those things that are in the world. But now you're looking for the things of God. And you found peace and grace. And you're going on because God's going with you. You have praised the Lord. You've experienced it. Your water has been turned to wine. Amen. God bless you. You need to pray a brief prayer and be sure you're right with God. Say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe He died for me upon the cross at Calvary. I believe He paid for all my sins. I believe He rose again. And when I believe in Him, I will never die. I will live forever with Him one day in heaven. Oh, I believe He's coming back. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus. Help me live for you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Then find you a good church and worship God with his people. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come and dine, said the Master. Come and dine. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come and dine, said the Master. Come and dine. You can feast on Jesus all the time. 
He who fed the multitude turned the water into wine. His class sends out to the hungry, come and dine. Oh, praise God. Come and dine, said the Master. Come and dine. Believe and you are safe and you're on your way home. God bless you and believe a few words to your heart. Amen and amen.